Okay, if you've, I hope you've uh, looked through the lab handout. You don't have to understand it completely the first time through, like we do in class. I'm going to go over briefly a kind of summary of it, just to make sure you get the right idea. And then if you go back and read it again, it should make more sense. So for starters, let's talk about percent uncertainty. So the lab handout mentions this, that um, you want to report report your results um, in terms of percent uncertainty. So let's see what that is. So the first idea is that uncertainty is an estimate for error. And we don't know what the error is, but we can estimate it with uncertainty. Can you focus there? So, so we don't know what the error is, but we do know, uh, we, we do get an estimate for it. Okay, now you're already familiar with percent error from Physics 1 Lab or from the handouts. So percent uncertainty is the same idea. But what you do is you put the uncertainty in place of the error. So there's no symbol for it. Percent uncertainty. Oh, wait. Let me say, before I give you that, Let's say, let's take a measurement. So for a measurement, and we think of it as a confidence interval, uh, I'm going to call it x bar because maybe it's the average of several measurements, plus or minus, and the uncertainty sigma x bar, that's the standard error, the standard deviation of the mean, the statistical error, uh, or the uncertainty, I should say, the, the, the measure of how spread out the well, not just how spread out the data are, but how uncertain we are about that mean value. So value and its uncertainty. Then the percent uncertainty is, first you take the relative uncertainty, and we've seen that in the propagation of uncertainty. So you take the ratio, the uncertainty relative to the size of the thing that you measured, and that's just a ratio. The units are the same, so that's just the number, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, but we turn it into a percentage times 100%. So I, I think of the percent sign as the units, right? Because when we multiply this ratio, like let's say it's 0 0.1 times 100%, then that'll get turned into 10%. So it's really, if we did percent error, we would take the error relative to the value itself and multiply by 100%. So it's the same idea, but we're going to do it with uncertainty because we don't know what the error is, and the uncertainty is an estimate for the error. Okay? Next topic. The whole lab is about model devices. So let's say something about model devices. First of all, we have a cell. Now, a battery, but a single cell battery. Here's the symbol, you know it already, right? Um, that's an idealization. It's a perfect source of EMF, of voltage. And normally we're happy with that. But a real world battery, or a cell in a battery, uh, actually has some limits. It's run by a chemical reaction, and the chemical reaction can either r only run so fast, or it, uh, it gets old and runs out. 
and that's what happens to a dead battery. And the cells that we're going to use in this lab are actually old hobby batteries that have pretty much expired. They're dead batteries. They're not totally dead, only partly dead. And so the chemical reaction can't run very, uh, very quickly, and you don't get as much voltage out of them. Now, the way we model this is we imagine that there's a little bit of resistance in line in series with this perfect uh, source of EMF. So this is what the chemical reaction of a fresh battery would be, the EMF. And this is, uh, we'll call it little r, and it's called the internal resistance of the cell. And for a brand new battery, it's very, very small. But for an old, old dead one, it gets larger. And we're going to measure, actually, the goal of this lab, one of the goals of this lab, is to measure the EMF and the internal resistance of the cells that we're going to use. Now, this is only a model. This is not what's actually inside. But you can't take this apart. And so we'll draw the little dashed lines. You've seen these in the, you've seen these in the drawings. The dashed lines symbolize that everything inside that box is just, you can't alter it. And it's just a model. And it may not work. We're going to test to see if, if this idea works. Maybe these batteries are so crappy at this point that we can't really even model them as a perfect source of EMF and a, with a little resistance in, in line. Um, there's a test for that. Uh, there's a couple tests. Uh, one of the tests is if you put two of them together in series, you know that EMFs in series should add, but also resistors in series should add. And so we should get, when two, two of these in series, you should get uh, the relationship that you can just add the EMFs of the individuals to get the EMF of the resultant, the, and that you could add the internal resistance of the two individuals that ought to add up to the internal resistance that you measured for, for both when you measured them together. So that's a model of the internal of, of a of a real world cell with internal resistance. The same idea applies to the voltmeter. Now, so a voltmeter is, you know the symbol, right, with a V. And a perfect voltmeter, an ideal voltmeter, has infinite resistance. Why? That's desirable because you always take a voltmeter and you connect it in, in parallel with whatever you're measuring the voltage across. Remember, remember the Ohm's Law Lab. And when you put this into the circuit, you don't want any current going through the voltmeter because then it's not going through the circuit. And by measuring the circuit, you've altered the, the circuit. And so an, an infinite uh, resistance in the voltmeter means that it won't change the current at all. It just passively will sample what the voltage difference is, but it won't change it. Now, in the real world, uh, voltmeters have some uh, resistance, less than infinity. And old voltmeters are worse. Newer ones are better. Technology gets better. We have some old voltmeters that have a fairly low internal resistance. Now, OK, what's the internal resistance? The way we model this is that we think of this as an ideal perfect voltmeter with some resistance in parallel now. I'll call this R sub V, V for voltmeter. And again, this in the dashed lines represents what's in the box that we can't change. So the meters that you've used in the lab already uh, you've already seen this in the capacitor lab, where we used the, the orange uh, digital voltmeters had an internal resistance of 10,000 ohms. This is perfect, but some of the current can go through this uh, 10,000, what am I talking about? 10 million, 10 mega ohms. So some of the current can go through here, but not much. That's 10 mega ohms. Uh, the, the voltage sensor that we use for the vernier uh, uh, voltage probe that we used in the capacitor lab had a uh, one mega ohm internal resistance. And again, that's a lot, so they're not going to get much. The, the meters we're going to use have only about 5,000 ohms of internal resistance. So we model it as a perfect voltmeter with 5,000 ohms across, 
across it in parallel, and so some current can go through there, and that will alter the results. So uh, that's a model of that, and we're going to have to take that into account when, when we make our measurements.